I create new videos each week, so don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Okay, so welcome to part two of my drum set restoration project. I'm actually sitting here behind the finished drum set so you can see exactly how it came out. And you can see it even better on a wide shot, so here's what we're dealing with. Now, when I first started this project back in the beginning of the summer, my goal was just to update the hardware from the chrome to the black. I wasn't really thinking about refinishing the shells and redoing the drums. But as I got into that and I stripped the drums and I started working with it, I just decided to go ahead and update the entire kit. Now, if you haven't seen part one where I talk about staining the shells, I'll include a link to that in the description below. All right, so let's get into this hardware rebuild. When I first started looking into what I needed to do, I looked into powder coating. The quotes I got for powder coating were in the multiple hundreds of dollars. I think the cheapest one was around 350. I looked into just buying all the hardware new. These drums are old, they're from the 80s, so I had to make sure that the new hardware that I buy actually fit the drilled holes that are in the shell already. The third option was of course to make it a DIY project and being that that was the cheapest, that's what I decided to do. Now I don't have the skills, know-how, or equipment to powder coat on my own, so I opted to just go ghetto and use some spray paint. Now as you can see, it worked out really well. The drums look great. And being that I have zero experience with restoring drums before this project, I thought it'd be a really cool thing to share with all of you. Any of my followers online that are looking to do something similar, listen, if I could do it, you could do it too. Okay, so here we are, and here's the drum in question. So eventually I'd like to do the entire kit, and the goal is to turn all of this chrome hardware black. So that's what we're going to do, and I want to do this on as little budget as I possibly can. So here's my plan. Initially what I've done is I purchased these black nickel-plated hoops. And the reason I purchased these nickel-plated already is I want them to be able to take some punishment when I'm playing. I figure all this other hardware, all the chrome lugs and the bottom hoop, that's not ever gonna be hit by a stick, so that should hold up a little bit better over time. The tricky part is going to be matching the chrome hardware to this black nickel. It seemed a little bit more black online than it came out when I actually opened the package. When I went to the store, I tried to find paint that more matched that style. And I came up with a few different varieties here. Uh, the first one that I bought is this Rust-Oleum metallic paint and primer in one, it's oil rubbed bronze. The next one that I purchased is this Krylon all-in-one paint primer, metallic black stainless. I don't know how close that's gonna be when it's actually on the metal, but this is what it looks like against that black nickel hoop. Now the third one I'm gonna try, if the other two don't seem to work, is just this regular flat black. So this is an experiment. I don't know how this is gonna come out, uh, but I'm figuring that if it doesn't exactly match the hoops perfectly, you're not gonna really see these things up close. I'm just looking for that nice black against this wood grain finish. Now a little background on this drum set before we get started. This is a Pearl MX from the 80s maple shell. And I love this drum set for gigging out and for sessions. Uh, it's been a real workhorse. All right, step one. What we're gonna do is take all this hardware off this drum. Then I'm just gonna spray three of these lugs with the different colors and see which one closely matches the hoop that we're dealing with. So let's go ahead and uh, take off some hardware. So now we got all the hardware off the drum. Now if you could tell, I don't know if you could tell in the video, but these are pretty old. The drum set itself is from the 80s, so this is the original hardware and it's a little chipped up, a little scuffed, there's a lot of little marks on it. And also I just want to make sure that the paint really adheres to this chrome. So what I'm going to do is I have this little multi-tool here with a mild sandpaper on it. I'm just gonna go through and sand this down just to create some grooves for the paint to settle into. So let's uh, give that a shot. So I'm hoping now you can kind of see what that looks like. And just to give you a comparison, so here's the scuffed side right here, and here's a regular unscuffed version. All right, so I have a few of these done. I'm gonna go ahead and take the screws. I don't wanna lose those, so I'm gonna put them off to the side. I'm gonna try the first two, the oil rubbed bronze from Rust-Oleum and the Krylon black metallic stainless first. If one of them gives me a good match, I'm just gonna go ahead and return the flat black. So let's see how it goes. So I'm going ahead and clean off any filings. Let's see, what are we gonna try first? Let's try this oil rub bronze. Directions on how to use this. I'm gonna shake it up. All right, let's give this a shot. All 
All right, let's take a quick look and see what that looks like against our black nickel finish. I don't know if you can see that. That's actually pretty badass. Now it's not completely dry, I just sprayed it, so it's gonna take a little while to dry. But let's check back in about 30 minutes for it to dry and see what we got. Okay, so I've let the oil rubbed bronze dry for about a half hour, and I kinda wanna show you what we ended up with. You can get it more in the shadow. So if you see the shadowy part down here, where it's not reflecting the light, you can see how it's a little bit closer to that color. The oil rub bronze does seem to have more of a little bit of a bronzish hue, which I don't hate. I think it'll actually look pretty sharp when it's all done. But out of curiosity, I really want to see what this black stainless is going to look like. So let's put this aside to dry and try the black stainless. Again, always practicing drums. Here's your traditional grip exercise. Turning the doorknob. Always practice in your downtime. This is going on really thick, which I don't like because I'm seeing bubbles. Not loving all the bubbles. Maybe I didn't shake it quite enough. I gotta say the color looks nice, but it doesn't seem like it's sticking to the metal. Perhaps I didn't sand it well enough. I don't know. It looks kind of like a mess. Yeah, look at all the bubbles we're getting. We're getting tons and tons of bubbles. I don't know why that's happening. It does say paint and primer in one. Definitely not sticking like the Rust-Oleum did, just to give you guys an idea what this looks like. On the other side of the coin, if it did dry evenly, that's actually looking a lot more like the finish that I'm looking for. Okay, so I went ahead and I waited for that paint to dry and then I wiped off as much as I could and I sanded it back down again. Kind of a pain in the neck to have to do that. So, boo, Krylon. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it another shot and see if we still have that same problem with the bubbles. I've let both of these dry. The problem with the Krylon is it's still bubbled up. I ended up having to do another, another coat, but it's still not a perfectly smooth finish. Uh, the Rust-Oleum went on great. It went on nice and smooth, one coat, no fuss, no muss, it was perfect. Now here's my dilemma. The oil rub bronze in and of itself looks killing against this shell, but the black nickel hoop doesn't really match too well with the oil rub bronze. And you can see that over here. You can see it's, it's a pretty clear difference. I don't know how clear it is on the video. To be honest, the Krylon matches a little better, but it still doesn't match great. This is definitely more of just like a, a black gray. It's just not as shiny and as clean, but I don't know if that's something you could fix with maybe a little clear coat or something on top of it. Uh, it just depends on how much work you want to put into all this hardware to make it match exactly. So again, here's what it looks like with the oil rub bronze. If you could check and see the difference in tones versus this one. Now, I feel like this one matches a lot better. It just doesn't quite work as well against the shell. So, I got a decision to make in terms of which one I'm gonna wanna go with. All right, so I went ahead and went with the Rust-Oleum Oil Rub Bronze. That was the one I decided to do. Now, I know that I didn't think that matched as well, uh, but truth be told, neither one of them really matched. And the real reason was it just went on so nice and smooth, no drips, no bubbles. Uh, the Krylon, on the other hand, gave me all kinds of trouble. When it comes down to it, uh, I'd rather have it nice and smooth. Now this is the hoop as it is. I was thinking about painting just under the lip, which is why I taped it off. But after I put them together and it dried a little bit, I mean, the bottom hoop is definitely a little duller. It's not as chromey as the top. But you know what? I think when you put that on a video, you're not gonna really see much of a difference. Uh, here's all the rest of the hardware. I went ahead and did all the lugs. Next step is to wait till they dry and then put it all together, see what it looks like. So we have our hardware all laid out and freshly painted. We have our finished drums over here and it looks like we are ready to rock and roll. So as you can see, we have our finished drums here. Everything came out really good. The shells are ready to go. And now that we have our hardware all painted, we're gonna go ahead and start adding the hardware back onto these drum shells. Couple of little details. So I went ahead and refinished these badges. This is the original badge that came with the kit. If you could see, it's a little road beaten still. It's got some scratches, but I did go through with a paint pen and cleaned it up. You could see there's some cracks over here on top of this. And I've also went ahead and backed it with some hard plastic. This is this plastic I got off of a Chinese food carton. Measured it, glued it on, and that'll just give me some protection so I don't put the badge right against the new shell. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the hardware back onto these drums, and we'll see what it looks like when we're done.
Okay, here we are with our finished drums. All we need to do is put on the rims and our heads. But here's what it looks like one last time before I go ahead and put the lugs in. So if you see, I put the badges on and we got our grommet. That is a pearl grommet that I got online. I had to replace the old one because I pretty much destroyed it getting it out. You can see the other one, here's the pearl badge. And that drum looks great. Likewise, here's the 14. Now to attach these badges, they were attached by little tiny nails. I replaced those with tiny little pan head screws that I got on Etsy. And those look like this. Just for a frame of reference so you could see the size of a lug versus how tiny these screws are. These were very hard to find, but they were perfect for what we needed. Okay, and we just have our last bits of hardware. We have our lugs over here. Let's go ahead and put the rims on these drums and see what they look like. All right, here we are, we have the light. Here's the bass drum all done. Here's your 14 inch tom. Here's your 12 inch rack tom. Super sexy. So that's gonna wrap up the hardware rebuild portion of this restoration. As I mentioned, I've broken this into multiple videos. The next one is actually gonna be a bonus where I talk about how I built that roller assembly that I used to finish the drums. It made it a lot easier and it was something that was actually pretty easy to do. If you dug this video, make sure to throw it a like. I come out with new content all the time. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.